Hey everybody, it's Chowder here at Vex Rules, checking in with Vex U Team Wisco out of UW Platteville. Back-to-back uh, -back world champions, obviously. Congratulations on all your continued success. We're so excited to talk more about this robot. Uh, this team, 75 plus years of experience, uh, and what a phenomenal machine. Both the robots are identical, so we'll be focusing on the orange robot here and talking about some of the features and capabilities with this. A lot of great custom work that's gone through with this. Love their linear slides, so we'll be showing more of this as well. They have a sentry mode that we'll be diving more into and so much more to learn about Wisco. Come up here on Pips and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Henry, let's uh, talk about this game in general. How did your team approach uh, the over-under game? And I'd love to hear more about your drive base also. Yeah, so the way we approach every game is exactly the same. We basically find 100% uh, of the points, cut it in half 50-50, and then try to make sure that we can score 51% of the points. Sure. Um, so that's kind of our general philosophy for approaching every game. It was no different with over-under. Uh, the big thing we do with the design of our robots that is a little bit different than everyone else is we make two identical robots. Uh, we find that that way we can put a ton of R&D into one specific design and not really have to worry about um, bringing extra set of parts for two different robots and, and things like that. But I can dive into the, the drive base here. So the drive base uses uh, eight motors in total. Um, they're all stacked up way up in here right next to the battery. And what we do is we make a custom gearbox uh, fully 3D printed and we run all eight motors directly um, on a singular gear that then transitions the gear ratio down around to 340 on these uh, custom Omni wheels right here. These Omni wheels are about three and a half uh, inches uh, in diameter. Um, and the way we make these is we actually take the Vex Omni wheels and take off their rollers. And then we kind of make a three stage sandwich, uh, the gear, the outside of the, or the inside of the Omni wheel, the middle and the outside, and then just kind of sandwich the, uh, the Omni wheels into there. Additionally, right down here, you'll see that the bearings on the wheels are actually uh, inside the Omnis rather than on the drive base. We decided to go for that because it just provides us with less friction overall on the drive base and then also less weight. We don't have to have as many bearings on the base. So those actually run on custom lathe uh, aluminum rods that we then tap and run in between each of our aluminum drive plates. Uh, the aluminum drive plates, speaking of those, they are uh, fully custom, obviously, and then they are just completely water jet um, uh, out of uh, eighth inch aluminum stock. Uh, and then we just kind of drill all the holes uh, and, and get those through the water jet as well. I want to ask you about these custom Omnis a little bit as well. Other than the weight saving method, are there any other advantages you've seen versus the stock VEX wheel? And then on top of that, what type of material are you using for your 3D prints? Yeah, so everything you'll see on this robot that's orange is going to be PLA. Okay. Everything that's black is going to be nylon reinforced carbon fiber. So we've got two different uh, types of filament here on this robot. As far as the wheels go, uh, the reason we don't use the stock VEX Omni wheels is because we can embed the bearings in our custom ones. Um, other than that, we can just have a lot more uh, variability with like the size and getting the right amount of traction and ratio and torque and all that uh, uh, fun stuff. So that's why we opt to go with the custom ones rather than the, the stock ones. No, I love it. I mean, this is a very aesthetically pleasing robot, by the way, too, I got to yeah. say out here. But awesome stuff that's gone into that. Let's pass over the Max, talk more about uh, your custom wings that you're doing as well, too. I really like, uh, you can see those deployed as well, too, in a little bit. But I really like the overall look of that. Let me be talking more about your kicker as well, too. Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, one thing with uh, Henry's philosophy, you know, getting 51% of everything on the field scored for us. With this game, it's all about consistency with these two mechanisms. Obviously, with the tri ball being the shape that it is, there's no consistent way to guarantee that it's going to roll in the same exact uh, spot and orientation every single time. So these mechanisms are optimized so that we can at least get a little more consistency with how tri balls interact with our robot. So our wings right here, as you can see, they're actually pretty small wings comparative to a lot of other teams. And one of the things that you'll see is that not only are there wall rides on here, which are these little wheels, on the uh, ends of the wings. They're also angled. So one thing that our robot does is when we push his tri balls in through the alleyway in the autonomous mode, it creates a bit of an angle and it's a flat edge on our robot and that angle is up against that wall. So it keeps, it funnels the tri balls a little bit better over into the uh, goal area for us to score. So there's not too much uh, roll away with tri balls or potentially rolling those tri balls into that uh, loader 
area on the other side. So we found a lot more consistency with those angled wings. And the other one being the kicker, which is on the front of our robot right here. So and Henry can actuate it a couple times potentially here, but essentially our kicker, the reason we went with this mechanism, um, and I guess to also clarify what this mechanism does, this is only used in the autonomous mode, uh, and what happens is we'll line up where the load area is, and we'll just put the tri balls in the corner, and we'll just kick them out with this kicker. So it'll just go back and forth, back and forth, and it's run off of one motor on the bottom right here. The big thing with this is to increase the speed of how many tri balls we place onto the field. Before, earlier in the season, we used what we called a scraper, which was basically this Delrin rod with a giant uh, custom piece of polycarb that hooks around and it would hook the balls out, as well as using our wings and just kind of pushing the tri balls out with our wings. And that's what a lot of teams do right now, but we figured that we want to try to score as many tri balls as we can in the autonomous period. The goal is to score over half the tri balls that are available on the field in all of our match loads. So this is a way that we're able to increase the speed and efficiency of that. You, met, you mentioned for that kicker there that you're only using during auto. Do you uh, Have you found any value potentially using it to like clear out the match load zone or anything like that too? Um, not in driver control. A lot of that has to do with the elevator mechanism. That's sure. a big advantage of that. And I know that Austin will be talking about that here in a little bit. That's a great segue, actually, for Austin. Let's talk more about uh, the elevator uh, as well and everything attached to this. So, you know, I love linear slides on robots. I think not only do they look cool, but you can do some really great things in regards to tri-ball control with it as well, too. Mm -hmm. So talk to me more about that. And it uh, also integrates a little bit into your climb as well. Yeah, so um, the elevator is mounted in the back corners here with these bearings that are our drive plates. The, run, the drive plates run all the way from the front of the robot up to the corner, so it gives us a nice, big, strong triangle. And if Henry actuates the elevator out, so this allows us to actuate out and go over the middle pole um, and over the load zone pole. Um, so then when Henry can drive forward here, it will come in and these kind of wall, uh, elevator walls we have on here, um, keeps the tri ball in this tunnel so that we can keep it, go out, grab a ball, come back in, and it will not leave the, um, the area underneath the elevator. Does this work out over the barrier at all too, or just like over in the, the barrier? Wow. Over all the pipes, and we can even reach over sometimes the middle pipe and grab a tri ball over the middle. <laughs> and yeah, and our uh, sister team has a six inch robot that we can reach over and pick out a tri ball over them. We've done it like once That's or twice. That's really cool. But it's, nice. It's, <laughs> sure yeah. they appreciated that, yeah. right? So The elevator will extend out like 15 inches past the front of the robot. Um, and then also this ties into our climber, which is actuated up by these um, pistons. And it, then it goes vertical. And when it goes vertical, we go up and attach onto the pole with our claw. And from there, then we tie it with a really long string our uh, paracord um, chain uh, to our drive bases. Our drive base then will pull the whole thing down, giving us a 10 motor climb. How much does this robot weigh overall? This robot this year um, push is pushing around 30 pounds. Okay. 28, 28 around there. And For sure. And looking at this, one thing I want to ask you is, uh, what made you determine the amount of stages you're, you're running with in regards to your slides? With determining how many uh, stages we go, um, we just, since we have the 36 inch radius, or yeah, radius from the edge of the robot, this goes out about the 15 inches, and then from corner to corner, we're pushing about 30, 34 inches. So if we added more stages, we, it's just kind of like the building rules and what we kind of used through there. Nathan, we got to talk about, uh, as we start wrapping this robot, this uh, sentry mode you were talking to me earlier about as well, too. I mean, not only does it sound pretty badass, but we got to run through uh, what it actually does, uh, especially in regards to uh, autonomous and how you're uh, finding tri balls on the field. Yeah, absolutely. So, as Max mentioned, uh, consistency is really valuable. These tri balls can bounce anywhere, and we can't really keep track of where they're going to go. Uh, the orientation is actually unspecified at the start of the match, so hitting them the same way two times will yield totally different results. Um, so when we push down the alley, we use the wings, like Max was talking about. But there's also tri balls that start in the middle of the field. Um, so to clean those up, we actually came up with what we call sentry mode. So on the front of the robot, we have two sensors. We have a vision sensor and a distance sensor stacked right on top of each other in the front of the intake. What that allows us to do is use the vision sensor to see the tri balls and turn to face them. And then the distance sensor can actually track ex the exact coordinate of that tri ball. 
From there, we can determine if that drive ball is in a valid coordinate that we're able to pick up. And if it is, we can combine the drive and the elevator to rush towards that ball, pick it up, and then bring it back, turn, and score it in the goal. So it runs a fully autonomous sequence where it can dynamically pick up and score any try balls that are left on our goal's side of the field at the end of our autonomous, which you can see with our blue robot. At yeah, what time, let me ask you, in your auto mode, like this, is that sentry like activated immediately or do you have some program, some pre-programmed things prior to it going into sentry mode, so to speak? Yeah, so the first thing we do is the match loads. Um, that's a fully pre-programmed sequence. Once we finish the pre-programmed sequence and we run over to the other side of the field, then we will activate sentry mode and it will take over from there. Awesome. Well, Wisco from UW Platteville, congratulations on a phenomenal run for these last three seasons, really. And we can't wait to see how you do here at Vexro as well, too. So good luck the rest of the way. Thanks for being a great inspiration. I think teams from all over the VRC community can learn a lot from this. And we can't wait to see how you do. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.